Corey here from Together We Harvest YouTube channel and I'm here to explain everything with getting started in your first 24 hours after you get baby chicks. We're going to talk about waters, feeders, bedding, brooder sizes, types, heat lamps, you name it. It's going to happen in today's video. Stick around, you're not going to miss it. Step one is selecting a location to put your brooder in. A brooder is just a place like a nursery for your baby chicks. For the first two, maybe three weeks, they're going to need a place with heat lamps and a small confined area. That's what we call a brooder. You can decide what you want to do with them after three weeks. But right now we have them in our basement, this brooder set up with a metal fire ring that I brought in from outside with a tarp underneath it. You can put them in your garage, a spare room in your house, a bar in a shed, whatever you have, as long as you can get the chicks in a place where they can maintain 95 degrees. We're just in our basement in a storage room that we literally never use because it's too cold outside or in the garage. These heat lamps are secured with some paracord on this just in case and also secured with this clamp. I want them both ways in case this were to go or this were to give way. You've got two sources of connection point with this paracord right here. I've got a heat lamp that's a little lower to the ground and a heat lamp that is a little higher off the ground. It gives the chicks options. Notice as well that I put them to one side of the brooder rather than directly in the middle because I want the chicks to have an option to go eat and feed and drink water and rest over here in case this becomes a little too hot. I have it connected just using these nails and if I want to lower I just have to remove this hook right here. I can put it down, I can pull it up. This is an old metal fire ring. You can use a cardboard box. You can put some plywood together. They sell brooders on Amazon at local feed stores and farm stores. It really doesn't matter as long as it's about a foot off the ground or slightly higher. Just to get through, you can use a tote, like a rubber rubberized container, like a plastic storage tote. You can use um, a water trough from larger livestock. If you have an old water trough laying around you don't need. Anything just to confine the chicks in a small area. I'm going to show you how I set all this up in my brooder. I've got a feeder, nothing fancy. You can get these at any feed store. A really simple water. I've got chick starter feed, which is important because it has a higher percentage of protein. I've got wood shavings and that's key. You want wood shavings, not sawdust or something because as the chicks peck at the ground, they're going to start consuming some of that sawdust and those finer little pieces of wood. So with the shavings, you've got bigger pieces that they're less likely to consume. All right, let's put down the shavings, which is basically just the bedding. I'm going to get the lights out of the way. Underneath my fire ring, I just took a tarp from outside. That way I can roll all this up when I have to clean it out and just throw it in the compost pile outside. Spread everything out. I want a couple inches of coverage everywhere because that's going to absorb all the waste and the water they spill. Okay, the next step is lowering their lights back to the appropriate height off the shavings. The reason why I put the heat lamp down before I put these boards in here, which I'll talk about in a minute, is because I wanna see exactly where the heat lamps are because this determines where I put their food. I'm gonna put their water on this two by six. It keeps it off the shavings. It gives it a little distance because if you put the water directly on the shavings, they're gonna get shavings in there. Their chickens are messy. They're gonna kick up some shavings. They're gonna walk on top of the water. They might poop in there. It becomes less sanitary. So I like to have some kind of two by four, in this case, a two by six. And then this one is a two by six over here to put their water on. Keeps it a lot cleaner in the coop. And then on this one, I'll put their feed. So here's their water. I have to be careful that we don't spill. I don't wanna get the shavings wet. You wanna keep this a dry environment to the best of your ability. We'll put it like that. What I've noticed is that the chicks often will jump up on this board and then they'll get water this way rather than reaching over this way because they're not quite tall enough yet. The next thing I do is I'm going to want to put their feeder in the same kind of setup as I do with their water on this side. And this is what they'll be eating out of at least for the first week or two. It's a good idea to keep the shavings and the feed nearby. You want an extra bulb nearby as well. Then you take your feeder. Get as much in there as you can. As you can see here, it's filled all the way to the top. Screw on the lid. So there we have it. We've got a complete brooder setup. Water, food, off the bedding, bedding fully around. You've got two heat lamps, one that's directly going to be above the chicks to offer the most heat, and one that is also gonna offer heat, but not as much. 
So this isn't something you absolutely have to do, but we like to add apple cider vinegar to their water. It helps with their digestive system when they're really young like this. The second thing we do after we add this to our water is when we put the chicks into their brooder, we actually dip the heads of the chicks in their water or their beaks, excuse me, not their whole heads. And that way we show them where the water is and it gives them their first drink. Chicks can go a couple days without food, but they can only go about 24 hours without drinking water. So giving them water immediately when you get them home in the brooder is very important. So the first thing I do is I actually put the box right inside the brooder. That way you're not reaching around and trying to lift the chicks over and everything. You're going to grab one baby chick like this and then dip their head. You're going to have to hold one with one hand and use your finger to push their head and their beak toward the water. They're kind of fussy, so you have to be careful. Dip their head. There you go. Dip their beak. And then set them off to the side over there. And do the same thing. This is a good way to count how many chicks you have. If you order 20, this is how you would count to make sure you have 20. And they didn't make a mistake at the hatchery. There we go. That one got a good drink, I could tell. 15. And 16. That's a little buff orpington right there. Cute little brown bird. After I gave them their water, which is right here, they immediately went over to the light because they were cold. Remember, they want to be around 95 degrees. If I check on them in about five minutes and they're all huddled around the light like this, that means they are too cold and I need to put this lamp lower. A healthy brooder is going to have a few chicks laying over there, heating up, some heating up over here, a couple getting a drink, a few of them wandering around, some of them eating. You want a diverse amount of activity happening in your brooder. I like to see that the chicks are making cheerful, happy little chirping noises constantly. An active, healthy chick is going to be doing that. The only time chicks should be quiet is when they're resting under the grow lights and maybe taking a nap. You will see them sleep from time to time. You'll notice that after a day or two or three, there's not a lot of food gone. These little chicks are not going to eat a whole lot, especially within the first 24 hours. You're not going to notice a whole bunch of poop all over in the wood shavings either. You'll notice that it's relatively clean. That's going to start picking up much more in week two or week three. But for now, what you want to see are the chicks moseying around, pecking at the feed, occasionally getting water over here, going back to the heat lamp, and kind of just going around just doing what chickens do. In my next episode in the series, Chicks to Chickens, I'm going to explain what chickens are going to be like at the three-week stage. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button over there, and watch this video next. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.